Happy to see everybody again. It seems like ages ago. It's been a while. Yeah, so I'm ready. <laughs> Mark? Philippe, we'll soon take away your good mood. Can we ask you about ah, yes. you, you, you prefer a bad a mood? You, you prefer a bad mood? No, no, we prefer a good mood. But, um, you know, it can be frustrating speaking about players' fitness. Can we get an update? On the players who had problems, there's quite a few who had problems going into the international break. Start with Ross McCarthy. Um Yeah, I will say the players who who are back in training. So that's Dujon is back in training. Um, Kieran Dahl is back in training. Uh, Abdallah Sima is back in training, and Ross McCausland is back in training. So the guys who were out is is Ritfan is. Ryan Jack is uh, Oscar, of course, Cortes and Danilo. Ridvans is a, a new injury. What has he done whilst on international duty? Is it a long term or a short term? Uh, it's not going to be a long, long term. We, we're going to see next week. There's a possibility he can be fit for next week, but it's still a doubt. So we will see next week to make uh, more evaluation about that. Of the players who are in training, are they all? in contention for this weekend or the likes of Abdullah Seymour, is he further down the line? No, they are in contention, but of course not to play 90 minutes. And then it's to make choices. Uh, if they can only play 15, 20 minutes, you can of course not have uh, four or five players like that on the bench. So uh, we need to take that in account and to make the, the good choices around that. You are very much a one game at a time manager. But given the I'm not the only one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but given the significance of next weekend, are you partly thinking about that game as you manage the minutes of those players? Yeah, but uh, it's not because it's against Celtic. It's always like that. So of course I'm focused on the next game and about getting a result. But it's always a longer-term plan also with the players. I never wish players. Uh, also, not when we play uh, Dumbarton in the weekend, next weekend. So it's always longer term. I never uh, play with the uh, with the safety of my players. Of course, you can have like at the end of the season a decisive game, and that you make a gamble together with your medical staff and your player. That can happen during the season. Never. Abdallah made a big impact in the first half of the season, has been out for quite a while now, but how happy are you that he could play a, a big part in the run-in? No, it's important, but of course he, he's been a long time out, so you cannot uh, expect miracles from the start, but he has shown his quality, he has his power, his pace, he has the, the appetite for goals, and, and he came back in a good way in the training, so uh, that's positive, it's now uh, building rhythm again. Uh, making him stronger again, and uh, and then he's going to play an important part, I think, in uh, in these last two months. We got the news today that from next season at Old Firm matches there will be a around five percent allocation of away fans. Is that positive news as far as you're concerned? Yeah, for me, yes, for sure. Uh, I think everybody loves football with with two sides of fans who uh, who sing against each other or sing towards each other. Uh, and to have this atmosphere. So uh, nobody enjoyed the COVID period um, when there were no fans. That was really difficult. It was hard. For me, it was also really strange to play in Celtic Park without s supporters of ourselves. So it was the first time for me. It's a strange experience. So I think everybody, every player, every manager wants uh, both sides in the stadium. And it's... Football is about that. It's it's entertainment, and entertainment from uh, from two teams. So uh, it's a very positive thing for myself. You'll have managed and, and played in big derbies in your career. How did they differ from the game at Celtic Park, where you managed and there was no away fans? Uh, not that much because you're focused on your team and the game, but you want to hear them. You want to feel them, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure the other managers want it also. So it's part of football, it's part of our lives. And you do it also for a big part for fans and, and to see them happy and, 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 and to feel the respect and to have the synergy together. So I think it's an important thing uh, also for an atmosphere in a stadium to have 
two cans of fans in the stadium. I know it's maybe not as simple as this, but there is still two games to go this season. Celtic Rangers games. Are you disappointed that it wasn't managed to get sorted for those games as well? I know there no, would have been complications. I'm not disappointed because I know also making rules. Uh, you cannot switch things in one day. There's a lot of organization about things and about uh, uh, relocating people because you bring fans in and, and all those things. So uh, I'm not involved in that in the club. I have enough of jo other jobs to do. Um, but I understand that you cannot change this thing in, in one week. So it's a very positive thing from, from next season. There uh, becomes a more normal situation again. How beneficial was the international break in terms of just getting the squad together again? No, in that way not, if you put a question like that, because the squad was not together. So I had today the first time uh, all my players back, because uh, Cyril and Fabio played on, uh, on Tuesday evening quite some minutes. They played the first game also. They had a lot of travelling to do, so they could not train on Thursday uh, to be fit for the game. So it was the first time today. So in that way, it's, yeah, it's a little bit, uh, it's always exciting because I always see our story together like a book. And I talked about that in the past, about a book and every week uh, writing new, new pages together. But it's important that they don't uh, forget pages that you wrote together before in the way we play football in the way what they need to do together on the pitch so it's a new test again because it's it seems like months ago that we played together that's my feeling so I want to see uh, that they didn't forget anything tomorrow that's a challenge what, what do you expect from Hibernian tomorrow? Sorry. Sorry, how beneficial <laughs> has it been with the guys who weren't on international duty to get a bit of Working with them, or have you done anything? Yeah, it's it's individual. Eh? So some guys had a lot of games. Uh, they had a lot of work done the last couple of months. They needed to not to do nothing anymore, but they need to find a, a better balance than when they played every three days. So they're fresh again, and others they had to train harder. To, to come back after an injury. So in that way, uh, we use the time in, in the best way. In a run-in like this, Philippe, how much does it play a part that you'll play ahead of Celtic on Saturday? And Not really. Zero. Is that we like <laughs> <laughs> Zero. No, totally not interested in that. No, it's about us. It's about performing and focus on our performance. If we perform well, then the points follow. It's all about that. And... Uh, showing the right mentality, what they've shown last couple of months, uh, showing what we can do together uh, on and off the pitch, also players coming in, giving the energy to the team. It's, it's a lot of things about us. It's only about us and it will be about us until uh, half of May or end of May. That Benfica match was the first time your team obviously hadn't scored in a game under you since you came in. Is that, yeah. a, testament? Is yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that a testament to how much your team have been clicking going forward in front of you? Um, probably. Um, when I came in, I, I said also I want to see a team who is dominant. I want to see, see a team who, who wants to create chances, who wants to score goals. So we've been playing like that for months. Um, I didn't realize it was the first time. So we had the chances against Benfica, but it's a good team. So that can happen in football. Uh, and I'm not worried about that uh, because there are much better teams uh, in the world who don't score every game. So, no, it, it's, a, it's good proof of the intentions that the team has and the way they want to play also and the way I want to see them play. Philippe, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of discussion amongst fans about Rangers set pieces, um, both attacking and defensive. Can I ask, are you comfortable with where they are just now or is there room for... For There's certainly room for improvement. That's because because of that we are training on that every week and before every game. So for sure there is room of improvement in the delivery, in the runs, in the timing also, in the uh, in the way of heading. So we're working on that hard yeah. For the players that were away on international duties, Sir Odessas, Fabio Silva, <coughs> did you track their performances, how they did for the yeah, countries? Yeah, I want to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I track everything, otherwise I, I cannot sleep. No, we know everything of them. 
So that's also one of the things we installed uh, the last time when it was international duty in November, that we have contact with the players every day, also about their trainings, what they are doing there. So that one moment, maybe you can intervene when it's not enough, for example, when players are not playing and you can have contact with the federations also to do something extra. Uh, of course, if they do too much, you don't have control on that. That's a pity. So that's something I need to let go. That's part of our lives as, as managers of clubs. And I think a lot of managers have problems with that sometimes. But uh, with a lot of federations, there's a really good contact. And, and it's important because it's important for us, but for them also. If the players perform here well and they develop well, it's better for the national teams also. Philippe, is there any update on John Lundstrom uh, on a contract? Uh, no, because otherwise you guys would know. Are you still hopeful and confident he will, he will sign to extend his stay here? Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm totally confident about that, that there's a lot of love on both sides. So then there will be a, a solution one moment. What kind of challenge are you expecting tomorrow from Hibs? That it's a, it's a good footballing team. It's a team who creates always a, a lot of chances, scores also a lot of goals, I think third most in the league. Um, and they're really hungry to beat us. I feel it every time more that we play against each other, that the hunger and the desire becomes bigger. That's my feeling around that. So we need to see a very good Rangers team and we need to feel a really good support from the fans to, to play a, a really strong game to win against them. The last game was quite a fiery encounter. There was a couple of red cards. Are you is that something we were really calm, to be honest. Is that something you're having to warn your players not to get involved in, or is it something you want them to warn them? No, it's one of my principles and my players know. I don't want to see tackles like that. I don't want that they get involved and get emotional when they get tackled like that, and that they stay calm and that we stay with 11, and that they don't go in discussions with uh, opponents or with the referee or all those things, that they are just focused on football and on ourselves.